is a quick video on the evolution of my uh, skinning knife. It started out this way as a steel lawn edger blade because it was cheap. I wanted some uh, metal to practice on. So I made a knife that would fit that. Here I am cutting out the first one with the plasma torch. Since this is my first knife, I really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Well, this is my first one of these knives. And that's one of the reasons I used uh, less expensive steel. Like, uh, this is $2.39 for this piece, uh, for this blade from Ace Hardware. Turns out that it came out pretty. It came out pretty nice, actually. Everybody that sees them uh, likes them quite a bit. They first they're not sure what to think, and then they see how it fits in your hand, how your hand can wrap around it in uh, multiple positions, and then they like it quite a bit. After I did the plasma cut, I. Round out the profile on the grinder. I'm still just a kind of an amusing hobby at this point. I had just started making knives, made a couple by hand, and then started working on this one. And this is kind of where the knife making bug really bit was when I was doing Lynn's knife. So not long after this I ended up building a 2x72 sander and getting more serious about my knife making. Use that little 2x42 sander that I bought on Craigslist for 100 bucks to do the flat grind on here. Use what you got. It's a lot better than the file. Those ones that I've done with the file, they took um, about 23 to 25 hours each to do with the hand file. It was a good experience, but I've got other things that I want to do, and so I can make one of these knives in about. Uh, well, this knife here took me about five hours to make, which was blazing fast compared to 25 hours. That's what I was doing on the previous ones. And the goal here is so that uh, you get to the center of the blade about the same time you get to the black line there so that you have a nice 
straight transition and then uh, when you get where you like it you do the same on the other side without changing your angles of your table I use the t angle of the table to change I would change the angle of the table in relation to the belt that was easiest for my style this is a sharpening aid that I had to put on the secondary bevel you just lay your knife down on that and it guides it using a 320 grit belt for the initial then I go to a 600 grit, uh, grit belt and then I have a little leather belt that I put on to do a power stropping the whole process takes about 10 minutes or less to get to a razor sharp mirror polished uh, bevel secondary bevel it is alright this is the leather belt I think I edited that other piece a little bit too short you want to do this with your blade etched down of course otherwise you'll cut the belt in half really fast so what I'm doing now is after the 600 grit, 600 grit belt, I'm polishing the, be the secondary bevel with this leather strop. And I put a polishing compound on the leather belt and just work it back and forth. Get that wire edge off of there down to a good cutting edge. This is another. These are some examples of knives that I have made. I made quite a few of this pattern. I like it quite a bit. A lot of people like it quite a bit. These aren't for, these aren't for me. These are for other people that I've been uh, making these. Then the water jet bug bit me. After I had uh, built my own sander, I thought, oh, I'm going to take this up to the next level. And so I learned how to do drafting on a computer and design these knives. This is the current, or the latest uh, ones that I've made, the BK Skinner, the Skeleton Skinner. And I, this is the sander that I made, hollow grinding jig that I built. So I can turn these out a lot quicker with more reliability, a higher degree of quality and precision. These particular ones are 1095. That's what I used uh, my first water jet session. I used a 1095 plate and cut out a bunch of different profiles to see what I might like. I can adjust the depth of the hollow grind by turning that screw and then take another little bite off. Most of these are gone. I sold quite a few of them bare with a sandblasted finish on it and just a bare metal. And then I started using Cerakote. And I think I'm going to... Well, you see in the end of the video here that I've actually changed materials. I went from the 1095 on this particular knife to a 440C stainless. So I think that's where I'm going to end up at. I'm pretty sure that's where I'm going to stay. For a skinning knife, something that's going to be in fats and uh, blood and water don't want something that's going to rust really easy like the 1095 does so the 440C I think is the one
Very nice looking hollow grind. The jig helps a lot. Here's one in a sheath. Here's some knives that have the Cerakote H graphite black on them. It's already baked. This one's kind of a, this is a raw metal one. It's just got a sandblasted finish on it. You have to keep that oiled or it's going to rust on you. Like I said, I sold quite a few of them like that. Just advertising on uh, Facebook, actually. People were driving from uh, as far away as uh, 100 miles one way to come pick uh, these up. There's a left and a right. Here's a, a pair of them in Cerakote Black, or Cerakote H, Graphite Black. I started doing that because uh, I didn't think the customers would be happy with the rust. There's one I put on the scale, 10.2 ounces. It's pretty light. Then I upgraded my material and went to this. This is a stainless steel version. 440C stainless. Ground this one up today. This is a BK Skinner Skeleton. Out of 440C stainless. It's been hardened to RC 60 to 61 by Peter's Heat Treating in Pennsylvania. Has a hollow grind on it. This one's going to my wife to use in the kitchen. She's been not getting a knife since I've been making knives and now that I'm starting to make some really nice looking knives, she's been interested in one. So this is going to be her kitchen knife in stainless. So it's going to be dishwasher safe, sink safe, won't be any problems in those areas. If you're interested in one of these, contact me. I'll make one for you. I uh, make them with a sheath that you've seen on the uh, 1095 version. I'll make that sheath, just a blade cover basically. Makes an excellent skinner. It's really what it is. This one's just going to be dutied for a kitchen knife.